Hi, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy. In our last episode, I talked about using tourniquets, such as the CAT Combat Action Tourniquet, to control severe bleeding from an extremity wound. In this episode, I want to talk about use of hemostatic agents to control bleeding from central wounds. Now, there are a number of hemostatic agents. Used by the military most frequently is quick clot, combat gauze. It also comes in a version as a 2x2 two two sponge or a 4x4 four four sponge. These gauze sponges are hemostatically impregnated agents that help to control bleeding from the periphery. So if you had a varicose vein, for example, that started to bleed from a leg wound, you could use a sponge like this to quickly obtain hemostasis or control of the bleeding in the extremity. When you have wounds in the box, as we call it, which is the central part of the body involving the chest and the abdomen, such as this severe wound, you want to use combat gauze. And the reason that you need something that's more than just a sponge is because it's necessary to pack the gauze into the wound. So I'm putting some gloves on to control bleeding from the patient using combat gauze. I'll open up the sponge, and we actually have what's a roller of gauze. The entire roll of gauze is impregnated with hemostatic agent. So we're going to take the roll of gauze and we're going to stuff the roll of gauze into the wound very quickly. And what this is doing is it's actually causing the gauze to have contact with the area of wound that's bleeding. Once you have enough gauze packed inside the wound, you're going to trim the gauze. And then hold direct pressure so that the gauze is inside the wound for about five minutes time, just as you would with any other piece of gauze that you're packing a wound with. A couple of critical things with using combat gauze. One is, if the gauze itself is actually not touching the source of bleeding, as we packed it into the wound here, you're not going to actually control the bleeding. So it's necessary not to lay the gauze over the wound, but to remove whatever it was that the patient had been holding on the wound previously and pack the combat gauze directly into the wound so that it's contacting the wound surface. After about five minutes pressure, if you find that the combat gauze has soaked through, you can add additional combat gauze on the top of it, just as you would with any other dressing to control bleeding. After you've controlled the bleeding and you're certain that there's no further bleeding coming from the wound exteriorly, you would use a dressing to secure that in place. And in this case, we'd remove the rest of the shirt from the patient around the wound and apply a bandage over the combat gauze dressing to tightly keep pressure on top of the surface of the wound, as you would with any other dressing that you apply to a patient. And then obviously, monitor the patient for signs and symptoms of shock and keep an eye on this to see if the bleeding continues. Combat gauze can stay in a wound for up to 24 hours, and combat gauze also comes in forms that are x-ray detectable if you're packing it deeply in a wound, as is done in the operating room and in surgery. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.